Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop and Bailey. Uh, we've got some viewer mail here uh, from another country coming from Canada. And we've got some channel stickers for Phil's projects. And Pierre's Garage. So, if you're not already subscribed to those guys, uh, you can check them out. See if they've got anything that you enjoy there. They just completed their uh, big task for making the hammers for the What's in Your Box giveaway, which was just completed on Keith Fenner's channel, if you keep up with that in the machinist community. So, a while back, uh, Phil was working on his taper attachment and was talking about not being able to turn a particular radius on a part because it exceeded his uh, capacity of his rotary table. And today I'm going to show you how to get around that. Now, let's, I'm not going to put them back in there. I'll just put put them here on the shelf with my other channel stickers. I've got a whole pile of them I'm saving to put on the boring mill once I get it moved in so that way I won't have to move them again when the shop gets done so let's go in the other room and I'll show you what I got set up on the mill okay so here we are over at the mill this is not an ideal setup by any means could maybe work as a get her done but uh, for the purpose of this, this is only demonstrational, so uh, don't really have a need to do this at this point in time. So I'm just showing you how you can do it. So what I've got set up here is a temporary mill table. And we've got a pivot point here. And what this allows is you can cut any length radius you can get away from your rotary table, basically. So, I mean, it, it, theoretically you could do, you know, 20 feet if you've got some place in your shop you can mount the end of this thing to where it won't move in relationship to your head and measure it off and cut it. And you're going to be limited uh, as far as how broad of a piece you can cut that radius on by how much travel you've got in your rotary table here. So I've got a two foot rotary table so I could do, you know, two foot because I can do 12 inches either way. So ideally you would have this cut out with a, a groove so that you can lock this down and have a bushing in it and it would hold this in real tight. I'm just floating the T-nut in the slot for what I'm gonna do. It's gonna let me get enough travel To do this board with which is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get another board and I'll just screw it on here and uh, we'll cut the radius on the board just to show you how this is done so I mean, we'll get a board and some screws and we'll fire us up all right so I'm sure you won't be able to see this with the uh, or hear me with the mill running so Got this set up here. I don't imagine that uh, a uh, negative rake carbide end mill is the ideal thing for cutting wood, so I don't know what kind of finish we'll get or how this will go. And so, this is really a demonstrational setup more than it is uh, an actual this is you do it. So, let's just show you how it's done and in the future. I plan to make a setup to actually do this on the big boring mill where I got more room. Uh, I'm limited on height on this mill. I'm, and my table's all the way down and this is all the clearance I've got so I can't stack a lot of stuff under here. So let's fire this thing up and cut this radius on here. Uh, I've got this set at three foot from the pivot. So that'll be my radius will be a three foot radius. So I cut it.
Well, there it is. Uh, one three foot radius. Hopefully that shows up to be curved. Use that straight edge there so that you can see the hump in it. So that is a true three foot radius. Uh, not typically on a cut a radius that's that small, but uh, like I say if you want to cut one that's bigger than your rotary table, this will certainly do it. So that's how you get it done. Hope you, that gives you an idea of how you can do this if you run into a situation where you need to mill a radius that's larger than your rotary table. Uh, that's how you do it. If you want to do this as a internal radius, you could also do that too. You just be cutting on the other side of it using the same setup and that would give you the, you know, you could cut this inside. So you could cut matching radii pretty easy on this setup. So hope you enjoyed that little tip on how to do it. Uh, like I said, in the future, I'll probably end up doing another video on this where I'm actually using it in the job and I've got a proper setup put together, but I just wanted to get this out to Phil. So if he decides he wants to do a job like this in the future, he'll have an idea how he can do it. And anybody else, of course, that applies to you too. So just thought I'd throw that tip out for you. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll catch y'all later.